Ciao! This week we're going to dive into the fuel tank and the instruments. Benvenuto a Hakoika! We left off last time with me needing a front wiring harness and putting the harness into the frame, the rear one. I've got most of that in there and I found a front harness on eBay that same day for less than 40 bucks shipped and uh, today is Tuesday, Monday? What is today? Today's Monday and the thing is on the way, shipped. But today what I want to do is uh, pull out the fuel pump and take a look at the lines inside the tank. There's some lines in there and stuff. And then the instruments uh, need to be swapped back. I'm going to put the clocks that are in the monster gauge back into the ST4 gauge. I'm going to use the ST4 gauge because then I can keep the, uh, the fuel gauge in there and the water temperature sensor and all that jazz. So let's get started on the clocks first. So here we are with the instrument clusters. This is the ST4. This is the Monster. Previous owner basically just switched the TAC and Speedo from the ST4 cluster into the Monster housing. I want to take it back out, put it back into the ST4 uh, housing because then I can keep this LCD readout which gives me water temperature, um, the fuel, and I forget what else, uh, a couple other things. But anyway, I want that back. I've also got the low fuel warning light here, neutral, oil light, direction, and high beam. So pretty much just need to swap them back over and then I've got to fabricate some sort of a plate that'll take the place of this plate that uh, will allow me to mount it to the monster headlight assembly that has the spacing here for mounting the clocks. But for now, let's just go ahead and swap these out. These are eight millimeter cap nuts that hold the instruments in. Pretty straightforward there. Just a matter of pulling these nuts off and then the uh, instruments should come out. Or the clocks as uh, people like to call them. It's about that easy. We've got bulbs here that illuminate the um, instrument. Those need to come out. They're just um, rubber push-in thingies. They're in there pretty tight. Got to wiggle them, twist them around a bit, and they do come out. So we'll keep going until we get these two swapped around. On the tachometer, You've got the two lights, plus you've got the electrical connector. There's just a little tab there if you just lift with your thumb. You can pull that apart. And then here we have a uh, oil light. And that comes off like so. So that gets both of those out of there. Now we just need to remove the ones from the uh, ST. Okay, that takes care of the bracket. We'll pull this little Phillips screw out of here on the uh, trip odometer knob. Get that off. And there we go. Got those out of there. Ah, ha! There's a rubber ring on here that goes with the one for the monster set up so that goes back on the monster and now the tack can go in and drop in all the way there we go and we'll mount this up tighten up the mounting nuts they don't have to be real tight just snug them up where they bottom out put the trip odometer knob back on up the screw and there we go now we just need to put the uh, LCD readout back in here pretty much the same thing just has the little rubber mount with a stud on the back a couple of wires to poke through
Okay, that takes care of the clocks. I'm back to uh, the ST4 setup. We just need a little cleanup. And uh, I'll figure out a way to get this all mounted on there after I buy some uh, chunks of aluminum to work with. Looks like there's room for them to mount up right about there. Should be just fine. I just need to get a uh, sheet of some heavy duty aluminum and fabricate up a bracket. Let's move on to the fuel tank. This uh, paint is in really nice condition. No major scratches, no dents, dings or anything. Let's flip it over and take a look. This is what holds the, uh, the fuel pump, fuel filter, fuel level sensor is all in there. And we've got one, two, three bolts that hold it on. Three nuts actually that hold it on. Uh, they look like they are 13 millimeter. Yes, they are. Pull these off. And take a look in there. See what things look like. So let's take a look in the uh, service manual I've got here that I downloaded. You can see right here on this page, I'm going to put this here so you can pause it for your reference if you want to, but the reason I'm pulling this out is to check all these lines right here. The fuel pump sits in here. There are lines in here that uh, there's in, out, and then there's also a vent line. And if one of these ruptures, you can lose fuel pressure and the fuel will just spray around inside the tank. So I want to make sure those lines are all okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and we'll take a look see what the lines look like this should just kind of pop right off I think just got a gasket on it I think but um, we'll see there we go probably got a big rubber o-ring yes it does now there's a line that runs up to the top and I can feel it when I pull on it that's the one that uh, runs straight through so that any fuel overflow uh, up in the top when you're filling it will run out safely out of this right here. Let's peek in there with a flashlight and see what's going on. Looks like uh, the fuel lines all look pretty good. Everything looks really good in there. It does have a metal cased fuel filter and actually uh, right now is a good time for a shout out to a commenter on last week's video. Um, Euclidean I believe it is. He uh, Gave me some really good advice on Ducatis. He said he's owned uh, dozens of them. He owns eight right now. Been riding since he was four years old, 49 years old. Uh, gave me some good pointers and advice. One of them was don't use a metal cased fuel filter uh, because they tend to rust inside the tank. But everything inside there, other than that fuel filter that I'll change out later, that all looks really good. The lines look good. So that's good. That's another thing I can cross off the list. So um, the O-ring around here is really well greased up, uh, which kind of tells me that probably this was all recently done. So anyway, we're going to just put this all back in for now <clears throat> and um, put the nuts back on and button it up. All right, that is all back in the uh, fuel pump and filter assembly. I must say that's a pretty neat little piece of engineering. I like that. Another thing I just noticed that I really admire is the drain plug. Thank you Ducati engineers for putting a drain plug in the fuel tank. Lots of fuel tanks don't have drain plugs. Cars and bikes, it's really nice when you see them there. Helps out a lot. So you'll remember from the last video, uh, one of my goals here is to get this thing just running for now and then we'll um, go back and do the timing belts and all the other stuff. But I do want to just fire it up and make it run. And so uh, the battery tray mounts right here and I can just stick the battery there for now. Uh, that way I can put it on there and connect it up. It'll stay on the bike. I can just go take the bike around the block, run it through the gears, make sure everything's okay. But the starter solenoid has been relocated to right here on one of the, uh, the mounts for the uh, battery tray. I need to figure out where the starter solenoid used to mount and put it back there. I guess I can look in the uh, service manual I've got. But for now, I'm just going to pull this off and get this little battery tray mounted back up temporarily. It won't be on here when I'm on the finished bike. I will probably move that battery to where the uh, 
original owner had it back there underneath the seat but I'm gonna fabricate something a little bit different for it and possibly find a little bit smaller uh, battery for it maybe a show rye or something like that hey it's Wednesday and my front wiring harness was delivered today on the front porch waiting for me when I got home There it is. Lovely. Awesome. And we can go ahead and get that on the bike. And we are one step closer to hearing that wonderful twin cylinder, L twin, as the uh, <coughs> manufacturer likes to call it. The sound of that beautiful engine. So, as I look this over, uh, I see that there are a couple places here for relays and it looks like this is one of them that goes right there I need one for there I got two more here let's see we got a flasher and then another yellow relay and I know there's some of you out there screaming right now I know where those go well I don't <laughs> So I gotta figure it out, uh, but I will because I've got the uh, service manual. So we can dig into that and find out where all this stuff goes. Um, this guy, it's like a barometric sensor to me, something like that. Maybe an altitude compensator, I don't know. I'm totally guessing here, but it looks like it plugs into this one for whatever that's worth. So I need a relay for that. And I gotta figure out where these two go. Oh, wait a minute, maybe right here. These two guys. Uh, yep. So that's where the flasher goes, three terminals. And that's where this other one goes. It's probably a starter relay, just a guess. Total guess, don't know. <laughs> and let's see, we got a two, four, six, eight, ten prong connector there. This one here, I know where this goes. This connects to that uh, part of the rear harness. So this is what ties it into the rear harness. There's my fuse block. And then the rest goes up into the uh, instruments. All right, let's get it on the bike. Let's see, we start here with this guy. So looks like this pushes in like that. And that swings into place. There's that connector. And I got this one that goes over to the left side in our controls. And that hooks up right there. <clears throat> that goes to a coil. I need to mount one of the coils right there for now, temporary. Only temporary. And then it looks like everything else is Pretty much just uh, the stuff that goes up to up to the instrument cluster. The fuse box used to mount like right in here somewhere when the fairing was on it. So I'm gonna assume that this air temperature sensor, pretty sure that's what it is, sure looks like one. Uh, yeah, there's the plug for that. So that goes right there. And I need a relay for that one. I've got a relay for that one. What else do we got? We got two little teeny connectors here. And one plug here, a plug there, here a plug, there a plug, everywhere a plug. <laughs> and what else? This is the other one. It goes into the tack. All right, I got that front harness in. I'm still missing a relay here. I gotta look up what these relays do. And uh, I should probably check the fuses, make sure they're okay. I got two extra wires here, I don't know where they go. I got a couple other ones, but I'm assuming they're signal lights because they're, um, there's two sets of these that look identical. There's one there 
and there's one over on this side so I would assume those are signal lights but the instrument cluster is all hooked up the battery temporarily installed duct tape to the rescue to hold that in We've got the solenoid hooked up um, let's turn the key on look at that we got lights all right I don't have a neutral light and it is in neutral the uh, LCD is working but there's no display here because there's no tank sending unit and uh, the headlights not connected let's see what happens when I push the starter button nothing but that could be because there's a couple relays missing and at the back here there's still the relays that need to go into a couple of sockets that are not here on this harness they're cut off for some reason no idea why um, anyway I got to connect those up I've got the connectors here from uh, the other harness so those need to get hooked up but anyway that's a start we got lights there so and I got uh, I got two sets of keys with this bike and I have these that were in my toolbox today and I've already lost the other set damn it which really pisses me off um, I'm getting bad about this losing crap in here anyway I'll find them they're here somewhere I just laid them down someplace and spaced out I'm getting CRS in my older age can't remember shit Seamus is um, making friends with these um, rear side pods Hey Seamus, what's up? Snoozing cat. My 18 pound ball of fur that helps out in the shop here a lot. He's seen a few bikes built. Well, I'm gonna cheat a little bit on turning over the engine because I'm uh, real curious to just turn the thing over. Um, probably hasn't been run for a while. So I'm gonna open up the um, throttle bodies here and squirt a little bit of Marvel uh, mystery oil in there. I don't know, maybe just a little, just something to, to lube it up down in the cylinders a tiny bit. Can't hurt a thing. So there's the starter solenoid and all I need to do is jump her between this hot side and the feed to the starter and it should turn the engine over. Let me get this rubber cover out of my way. Let's see what we get. Um, hmm. That should have done it. But it's not done in it. Alright. Am I missing a ground wire somewhere? Maybe? Huh. So, pretty sure I'm missing a ground somewhere, so temporarily I just did this chunk of ground wire I have on the negative to the frame right there. Let's try it again. It's pumping a little bit, let some oil pressure build up. Good enough. All right, well that's good for it. Probably hasn't been turned over in quite a while. Next up are the connectors that go at the rear of the harness under the seat. I need to splice these in where they were cut off before. And um, I'm leaving some room here. I pulled off the outer sheath because I'm gonna put shrink tubing on here and put it as far away from where I'm doing my solder joint as possible because if you get it too warm, it'll shrink up on you ahead of time. So I'm going to strip these about probably 8 or 10 millimeters of bare wire on each end and then we'll splice them together and solder them up and then cover them up with heat shrink tubing. Now here on the harness on the bike I've cut this sheathing back a little bit. I just put a slit in it and peeled it back and uh, what I can do while I'm working on this is just put a wire tie around here, temporarily hold this back out of my way, like so, and I'll just cut this loose later. And now I've got all these wires nicely exposed where I can splice in that um, connector. All right, we're ready to solder this up. 
I've got my third hand tool here. These are really handy. Just basically a couple of alligator clips mounted on this thing. You can articulate wherever you want and uh, they really help out when you're trying to solder together wires to hold them where you want them. Um, kind of be nice to keep that stuck in place. <clears throat> so maybe uh, a bit of duct tape to the rescue, perhaps. There we go. Gotta keep it in place. Okay, so let's see if I can uh, get in here super close and show you my technique of how I splice wires. So first we're going to put this uh, pink wire black stripe together. And um, i got this little thing I do where I can either tin this ahead of time. Tinning it means putting solder on it and just getting it totally covered in solder each piece. And then I can just hold them next to each other like that and just let the, the bond be the solder between the two. But um, there's another technique I use where I'll just split them into two little pieces like that. So you have just two sections of wire and then I'll do that to the other side. Okay, so now I've got them both looking like a Y and I can get my third hand tool involved here. See if we can get these closer together. And then butt them right up against each other like that. And then I'll take two of the pieces and uh, you won't be able to see all of this until I'm completely done getting it set up. But once you see it, you'll get the idea what I do. So I twist these two together. And I twist the other two together. So you end up with something like that. Where they're both twisted together. And then I just give it a little pull. Twist them a little more. What I want is a little bit of gap there between the insulation of each wire. And then and I can just kind of flatten them out like this. And then I'll apply some solder. So the trick is you get what you're trying to solder hot enough to melt the solder. Okay. And get a good amount of it on there. There we go. Now those are bound together really well and they're also twisted together really well so they're not going to come apart from vibration or stress or anything like that. And so now that that is all soldered up very nicely we can bring the heat shrink tubing back up in there to cover it up. If you have a really good hot heat gun you can shrink it with that. You can shrink it with um, like a lighter, a little butane lighter, or you can just use the soldering iron heat that will just rise up off from the tip and just move it back and forth like this across the heat shrink and it'll shrink up and cover that splice. There we go. So the splicing of the connectors is all finished up, plugged back into the relays under the seat here. These are all fuel injection related relays. There's one more small one here. I need to look this one up just to see what this does and I can't quite figure out where it mounts. It uh, has got a little rubber thingy on it to mount it somewhere. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly where it goes in there but I'll figure all that out at some point. I figured out why the uh, starter button wasn't working and it's because I'm missing the um, switch down there in the kickstand. The kickstand sensor is not on this bike and I can't even find the plug anywhere on the wire harness in this area. should be here somewhere but I can't find um, where it is, where it should plug in. It 
might have been snipped off somewhere so close that I can't find it. That's a possibility, I suppose. But I'm not too worried about it at the moment because I found the safety relay socket, which is up here near the front of the bike. This used to mount up under um, the left side of the fairing up by the handlebars. This is the socket for it and you can bypass it just by jumpering it right there. On these small relays, the two uh, terminals that you see there without the plug in it, those are what power the relay. Where I have it jumpered, that's where the relay would make continuity inside it when it's on. There's a little, um, couple of little contacts in there that close and then these two have continuity. So right now, basically I've bypassed the uh, kickstand sensor. I kind of wish it was there because it's a nice feature. I had it on my BMW and if you were to drive off with the kickstand in that position you can see that it kind of is canted forward and you go into a turn and it could potentially throw you and down you go and that's no fun. So you know it's like old school bike you gotta just keep your wits about you and remember to put the kickstand up before you go taking off for a ride. So. What's next? Uh, I want to put the stock air box back on, so I need to get the uh, rectifier out of this area. Previous owner mounted it there. It's actually not a bad location for airflow because really important that rectifiers are in a position where they can stay cool or they burn out. And I've read that on uh, not just Ducatis but on other bikes, these things are sometimes put in some areas that you kind of wonder what they were thinking when they put them there because there's no airflow around it and they get hot overheat and burn out. So I'm going to figure out a place to mount that at some point, but I'm going to pull it out of there for now and then reconnect these wires. These are the three wires that come from the alternator. I'll get those reconnected temporarily uh, so that we can actually have some battery charging going on when I fire the bike up. So that's the next order of business is get that all pulled out of there and reconnected. Okay, the regulator's pulled out of that space and reconnected here. This had been spliced up with another connector here and then another splice and that's not good. You want these three wires that go to the rectifier on any bike, the ones that come off from the alternator to the rectifier, you want to have really good connectors. Any place where you've got a push connector um, is going to be a high resistance connection and limit some current flow and that's not good. It'll get really hot. So that's how those are connected now with just some barrel crimp connectors. Depending on where I end up mounting this later on, I may end up soldering all three of those wires in place. But for now that's connected up and we'll probably just kind of let it dangle in space here somewhere. So the next thing we need to do is get coils mounted somewhere. I'm going to just put them right here temporarily. I've got a lug in the frame here where I believe there were some brackets that went that held the fairing. The, the coils used to be right in this area on either side. So I'll mount those up with a six millimeter bolt and plug them in. Let's see. There's the connector for the one on this side and the connector for the one on this side and then I need to figure out which one of these is the vertical cylinder and which one's the horizontal cylinder. Okay, we're almost ready to um, try the old fire up on this thing. I've got the coils connected up. I got one coil mounted there, another one mounted over there. From what I can tell from my shop manual, the coil over here on this side goes to the vertical cylinder. Um, I guess we'll find out when we try to fire it up. And uh, let's see, the fuel lines are connected uh, down here on the tank on this unit. There's two lines. There's an out and a return. The return line is here. There it is. That's the return line. That's the out line right there. Uh, let's see, the return line goes to the, yeah, return line goes to the vertical cylinder throttle body and the feed line or the pressure line runs up here to the horizontal cylinder throttle body and then between the two of them there is a line that runs between the two. 
So it comes in, runs through the front to the rear, and then back. So it's a closed loop system. So let's see, I guess that's about it. I got the battery uh, connected back up. I made a quickie little ground wire that goes right to the chassis, real solid connection, better than I had before. Gave the battery another little charge today. And what else? So I got it wire tied in place so I can uh, get it running and take it out here on my uh, cul-de-sac test track. <laughs> Don't plan on going out and uh, ripping on this thing uh, without checking out those timing belts. I'm probably going to give it a whole lot of revs till I make sure everything's good too because it has not been run in three years. So I don't want to take the chance that one of the timing belts might be a little weak and blow on and end up totally screwing up one of the heads because it is indeed an interference motor and you know what I just now found this line hanging out here this is a ground cable uh, how about that it goes right to the engine so I guess I could put a connector on that and um, connect that up to my battery if I want okay got that extra ground wire on there that goes right to the engine so that'll probably help with amperage delivery uh, let's go ahead and get some gasoline in here I went and bought a couple gallons of some 93 octane and we'll dump a little in and uh, see what we get. Benzina nel serbatoio. That's gasoline in the tank in Italian. I'm teaching myself Italian as I go along. I probably have an accent. Okay, that should be about a gallon. Going to check for leaks anywhere under here. Looks good, looks good. Let's close this up. All right, turn on the key. We should see a display here showing a fuel level, and I should hear a fuel pump run. And uh, I will also check for leaks after that happens. Fuel pump up, oh, good. Fuel pump ran, built up pressure, and stopped. And it says low. Still need to uh, add some to make that go out. I think it's six liters is where the fuel light comes on. So we have fuel in there. That's good. We gotta let it run a few times. Okay, now I'm going to uh, lift the tank back up and look for leaks. Looks good. I don't see any place where anything is leaking. No weirdness going on in the throttle bodies. All right, now that I know I have no fuel leaks, I got a running fuel pump, all that's good. What I'm gonna do next before I try to fire this off is disconnect the fuel pump there's a connector here under the tank and then I'm going to disconnect the electrical feed to both of the coils and then what we're going to do is crank on the engine until I see the oil pressure light go out that way I know I've got good full lubrication all over the engine and I won't scuff a bearing or anything let's turn the key on that's the light I'm after. That's the one I want to watch right there. That's the oil pressure light. I'm going to push the button and crank the engine over until I see that light go out. It might not go out. It might not have enough pressure just cranking over. I need to be mindful of how long I do this too because that starter is getting hot. Okay, let's give it a rest for a minute and we'll go for it again one more time. Wait a minute. Just had a thought a second ago about the wiring I connected on this thing and, and it just dawned on me 
I wonder if I've got the oil pressure switch connected to the wrong wire. So I got looking around and sure enough, the neutral switch and the oil pressure switch, the, the wire plug are identical. I had them backwards. I went back on my camera and I looked at my videos and the oil pressure light stays on, but the neutral light goes out. So I had it backwards. So um, we'll do it again just so I can show you that now I've got it connected right. So let's crank it one more time and watch that oil light again. Okay, key on. All the lights are lit up. And just for the hell of it, let's push that shift lever down. First gear. Yeah, look at that. Neutral light goes out. Okay. Let's crank it and watch that oil light now. Aha! All right, so I've got oil pressure. Let's connect up the fuel pump and the ignition and fire this baby up. All right, here goes. First time in three years. Moment of truth. <laughs> This is with the clutch lever out. Clutch lever in. for now so maybe let's run it through uh, the gears just to check out the gearbox yeah Pretty good progress this week. The bike runs. I would take it out for a little drive around the uh, cul-de-sac on my street, but it's really rainy today, so oh well. We'll have to save that for next time. Next up is going to be uh, routing all the wiring where it's supposed to go, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is find some monster stick coils and put them into the heads on this thing. They should fit just fine. I've read that you can do that and uh, I can eliminate those other coils and the need to mount them anywhere and the plug wires. We'll get all the, uh, all the wiring tucked away nice and neat, uh, fuse box mounted somewhere, and the instrument cluster needs to be mounted. I need to make uh, fabricate up a mount for that. I've got another seat on the way that I found on eBay that has a uh, rear cover for it and it's also been modified, it's lowered a bit. So, you know, that can kind of be my one-seater seat, and I'll save this one for, uh, for the two-up when my wife and I take this thing out for some rides, which I hope to do. Let's see, what else? Uh, I guess that's probably what we'll work on next week, is the wiring cleanup and fabricate a bracket for the instruments. And that's all for today, so thanks for watching. And thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all the donations. There's a link down there in the video description if you'd like to help fund the project. And along the way, I'm uh, learning some Italian. So this week, we'll say, Fino alla prossima volta!